Hi, my name is uh, Bob Brenneman. I'm a realtor in Charleston, South Carolina. Today we're going to sit down and uh, talk about the second home market. And I've been fortunate enough to get hooked up with uh, Mel and Shelly Miles, who own exclusive properties here on Isle of Palms. And today Mel is going to discuss some of the benefits and some of the things that you should look out for uh, in buying a second home in the Charleston, South Carolina real estate market. Mel, often, I often work with people that are looking to buy second homes, whether it's on Isle of Palms, Sullivan's, or Folly Beach. You know, and they, they often ask me, you know, they're asking for guidance. And, you know, you own exclusive properties, you deal with beach rentals. What are some of the things that people that are potentially going to buy a second home should be looking out for? Well, we, we lived in Greenville until 2004, and we owned two homes down here in Isle of Palms. Mm -hmm. So we went through a lot of the same issues that a lot of these potential owners are going to go through. Mm -hmm. And some concerns that we had that any, any owner should have would be, what are my revenues really going to be? You can have a lot of companies over project, but you need to have confidence in really what kind of income you're going to receive. And then truly, what are all, what are all your expenses going to be? And then also to find, if you don't live here in the area, you need to find somebody or a company that you have 100% confidence in in looking out for your asset because mm -hmm. not only are you looking at your income and expenses, but you need to protect this asset so it can continue to hopefully appreciate and at least not depreciate any more than the competitive homes mm -hmm. if, if an environment is not favorable, which it has not been favorable the last few years. But right now it's picking up and um, you just need somebody and some company that you can trust to provide you the oversight to take care of your home as if it's their own home and also provide you feedback and recommendations to, to improve your house. If you were advising somebody that's buying a second home, I mean, what are some things to look at as far as rentability goes? I mean, I know the house we're sitting in today is oceanfront. Um, certainly that helps, but what it are does. some things that are maybe somebody that can't spend $4 million or $5 million for a house? Well, obviously, the proximity to the ocean, the occupancy, and a pool will drive rental revenue. So you have to balance the price of the home with the revenue that it can generate and what your affordability is. In, in occupancy, there's different... Uh, Isle of Palms has scaled back the occupancy for these houses, so that, yes. so that certainly affects your bottom line as far as... It does. They, they have grandfathered in existing rental homes with their, with their rental license. However, any new construction that occurs is maxed out at an occupancy of 12, which significantly will damper your potential rental income mm -hmm. for first and second row homes, which has hurt the values a little bit on, on first and second row. Mm -hmm. Your company represents mainly oceanfront houses or second row occasionally, but uh, you you work, I know, from, from, from Folly Beach all the way out here to Isle of Palms. Tell us a little bit about, you know, Sullivan's Isle of Palms Folly, just kind of in your opinion as far as rentals go and second home. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing to think that Isle of Palms homes are renting for more than Kiowa homes. It is shocking, but the truth is that you can have the same home, mm -hmm. but because of the demand of this area and the proximity to Charleston, Isle of Palms demands very high rental rates. You can get also a very nice home front row on Folly for about half the rental rates that Isle of Palms demands. And half the cost a lot of times for the, and for the house. And it's going to typically yep, translate to half the purchase price. In Sullivan's Island, obviously, they have a, they've had a, a moratorium on uh, short-term rental permits for a long time, so it's a little bit different environment down there. Does it help people with uh, garnering more rent, or is it just... It would be very similar to Isle of Palms. You don't have... I don't think it's more than 50. I'm not exactly positive, but there's just a finite number of rental licenses on, on Sullivan's, mm -hmm. and so... If you have a front row home or a second row home on Sullivan's, those rents are going to be comparable to the ones on Isle of Palms. Okay. Talk a little bit about exclusive properties. Obviously, it's a, it's a company you started how many years ago now? My, my wife really got involved in starting this company when we owned our homes and we lived in Greenville. What happened to us is that we relied on a, a large rental property management company to 
produce the rental revenues that they had conveyed to us up front in order for us to service our debt. Mm -hmm. And so we relied on that company in order to, to help us achieve those, those revenue goals. And it, and it just wasn't happening. And it forced us as owners to get into supplementing the rentals. Mm -hmm. So my wife was forced to figure out a way how to market our homes to generate that income. And so after going through about three major rental companies down here, when we moved down here in 04, we took it on ourselves, took our properties on ourselves. We were disappointed in getting nickel and dime to death for air filter change out, batteries change out in remotes, things like that. And we just didn't think it made a lot of sense for a management company to be charging us a markup on repairs and maintenance items. We wanted them to look out for us. And so with our company, we charge zero markup on any kind of subcontracted services that we provide. We charge no markup on any repair costs, nothing, charge it directly to the client. So our philosophy is to really go to bat for the homeowner, represent the homeowner, and take care of that house. I mean, it would really frustrate us when we would get a bill that a table leg was broken, but they're billing us. Well, why would they bill the owner of the home that? That needs to be billed to the renter. And it just felt, it just felt like the, these companies weren't really looking out for our interests. They were protecting their rental, the renter's guests' mm -hmm. interests as opposed to our interests. So that's how we, we, we only have about 18 homes. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to get more than about 20. We have four full-time staff managers looking out for our owner's properties. Whereas when we were in Greenville, we had a property manager managing one of our homes and 70 other houses. And there's no way you can be proactive in the maintenance needs of the home, um, taking care of that house when you've got 50 homes for one property manager. Yeah, that's a good point. That's, and that's a lot of times what I, what I tell people advising them about second home rental management companies is to find a company like yours or a niche company that handles a smaller number because it just, it's like you said, you were working with a rep that had 70 other homes. You know, that's just almost impossible to stay on top of that many properties and really service it the way that you, you need to in order to take care of your second home. It is, but that's typically how this business has been run. It's very reactionary. You know, most companies, property management companies, will repair or address a problem after a guest has notified them of that problem. What we try to do is go in and make sure everything's right before the guests get there. Mm -hmm. um, we write handwritten thank you notes to every single one of our guests. Uh, we meet them at the property. We orient them on the idiosyncrasies of the property of how to operate the elevator, the audiovisual system, and other things. And so we try to develop rapport with our, with our guests for a couple reasons. And one is we think that they will treat the home and respect the home more if they have a little bit of a relationship with us. That's a good idea. That's a real good idea. And, and it creates less complaints during the week. So from a selfish standpoint, we don't get called and bothered nearly as much during the week because we've already developed a relationship with them. That makes a lot of sense. Well, I know you're not an accountant, you know, or a tax person, but, you know, kind of talk about some of the, some of the little gotchas or some of the, you know, benefits of owning a second home, again, knowing you're not an accountant. But well, just... What benefited me, my accountant allowed us to accelerate some items in the home, some structures over a seven year depreciation schedule. So that helped me personally on my taxes, mm -hmm. uh, like countertops, flooring, cabinetry, fixtures. We were able to accelerate that depreciation over seven years. So even though your, your net income might not be positive, the tax savings effects for me ultimately netted us uh, an increase in income. Mm -hmm. You couple that with hopefully the potential appreciation of the property. It's pretty good, pretty good investment. It's a good time to be buying. All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed uh, the talk today with uh, Mel Miles uh, of Exclusive Properties. If you have any questions about second homes or the second home market in Charleston, please feel free to give me Bob Brenneman a call at 843-345-6074, or you can visit me on the web at charlestonproperty.net. Thanks so much, y'all. Mm -hmm.